Daniel Perez is a Republican member of the Florida House of Representatives. He joins us now from Miami in Florida by Skype. Thanks very much indeed for being with us. So, on the one hand, on this issue of litigation, that the Trump campaign was wanting to the vote count to stop in, in one state, but then in another, in Arizona, it could actually lead to uh, an improvement in the result for, for Trump. Isn't this a bit incoherent, this uh, litigation? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, what we're discussing here is which type of votes is being counted and which is not. What the Trump campaign is stating here is that those ballots that have been received after November 3rd should not be counted. Anything received before November 3rd should be counted. But if something was postmarked on the 3rd but was received on November 9th, uh, that was not in the hands of the supervisor of election or the secretary of state of that state before the election was completed. So it's all depending on the state, but they are two completely different arguments. So tell me, so they've lost, or already a judge has thrown out the case uh, in uh, Michigan. Would that be something that, you, that the campaign would continue to pursue, or do you think that they'll sort of leave it at that and, and move on? At this point, I, I would expect the Trump campaign to look at all options. Uh, and moving forward and, and continuing that legal battle is an option. Whether it's pursued or not, I think still depends on what's taking place on an hourly basis or really more on like a minute-by-minute minute basis at this point. Um, we still haven't seen what's going to happen with Pennsylvania. Arizona's going back and forth. And let's not forget Nevada. Nevada truly is the linchpin here. I mean, we have to be very careful with what's going on before any other decision is made. But I would say that I think all options are on the table at this point. If Biden does get to 270 in the next uh, few hours or even days, at what point do you envisage Trump conceding or do you think that he would then continue uh, litigation even if there's a kind of clear-cut path to 270 for Biden or result of 270? Well, I think when you have a scenario um, that we've seen in multiple states, but let's talk about Michigan, for example, uh, where, where the president uh, was uh, at some point was in the lead and all of a sudden you are seeing 36, 37,000 ballots show up to the supervisor of elections office and all of them happen to be for Biden, I think that that forces you to scratch your head because that's just not normal. And look, I'm from Florida, and in Florida, we don't have that problem, and I'll tell you why. In Florida, on November 3rd, all votes are done being counted for. They start being counted as they arrive to the supervisor of election of that county. Yeah, but by but I mean, November in some ways, 3rd... Sorry to interrupt you, but in some ways it's irrelevant because each state has a different procedure, isn't you? I mean, so that's why the right. different states have different rules, and presumably they're entitled to follow their rules as they've set them out before the election started. It's not as though they suddenly right. came up with a last-minute change of plan on November the 3rd. They had rules in place in the way that Florida does. That's absolutely right. And some of those rules aren't even being followed, which are favorable to the to, to the Trump campaign. And, and those are rules that were never were never created prior to this election day. There are some states that are telling you that they may not have a result on the final vote of the presidential election for weeks. There are no rules in any state that says a, a, a ballot can be counted literally weeks, sometimes even at this point, there's a potential for it to be months after the election day of November 3rd. But it seems to me that some states are more biased than others, to be quite honest. Daniel Perez, thank you very much for your thoughts and for talking to us on Al Jazeera. Appreciate it.